Boca. 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 Not on camera. Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a little bit frustrated because I'm having to refilm this video. Not the whole video, but most of it. I was having a very bad day on the initial day that I filmed it and my ADHD was all over the place. It was actually the same day that Mercury went into retrograde and I'm very susceptible to planetary alignments. I know people think that's crazy, but literally it, it's, how, it, it's how it affects me. I tried to edit it and it wasn't it wasn't coming out well. I had to take out so many bits and pieces that the video ended up being very choppy. It was very hard to follow. I didn't feel like I was conveying the information I wanted to convey in a cohesive, informative way. So I'm refilming that part. I will be including some of the original footage of when I first tried this foundation and also from my entire wear test on the, on the initial day um, because I think that that footage is okay and I feel like it's really relevant. But the intro where I gave you guys the information, that's what I'm refilming now. So let's go ahead and get into that. But before we do, please make sure to subscribe and turn on your notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. The foundation that I want to talk about today is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Long Wear Concealer and Foundation. This is a new product and I feel like it's very innovative. They have over a hundred shades that they offer a hundred shades correct me if i'm wrong but pure is not only the first but also maybe the one and only who has such an inclusive shade range and they cover light medium tan i think deep and then they have the different undertones so there's the neutral there's i think it's pink pink undertones neutral undertones yellow undertones. I will put a picture up so you guys can see the entire shade range. It's it's kind of intense. It's kind of crazy. There's two different ways to find out what shade it is that you need. There is a matching quiz where you go in, you go to purecosmetics.com and you start with giving them your skin tone and then your undertone and then from there it will kind of like tell you three different shades. I was given LN6, LN7, and MN1 which maybe I, I hit something wrong and that's why it told me that I should go with a darker shade, which that could be very well user error. I accept that <laughs> it's probably, it probably was user error. Um, and so it, I ended up just sticking with the LN7, knowing that it was gonna be too dark, but thinking, okay, it's a little bit in between, so I'm just gonna go with the middle shade. Also, it's an odd number and I'm obsessed with odd numbers. So that's what I did. I was able to work with it and I do like that about that. I think that because you have such a broad spectrum of shades in this shade range, I feel like people can gravitate more than to more than just one, especially since it is a foundation and a concealer, which I will get to in just a second. The second way that you can find out which shade you are is they have a matching quiz where you can go in and you select a foundation that you currently use and then you select the shade that you use in that foundation and then it will recommend which shade that you should be using that correlates with that foundation does that make sense i don't think i think i explained that in the most <laughs> difficult way so like if you use the it cosmetic cc cream in the shade fair which is what i use um i put that in and then it would give me a correlating shade so that i was able to say okay if i were this and this is successful for me in it cosmetics then in pure cosmetics this is what it's going to tell me to use and it's going to be corresponding i did not follow that guideline for whatever reason i probably would have gotten a better response if i did um i do feel like that's much more personalized whereas the other one is more of a guessing game um but it's more of like an estimated guessing game if that makes any sense i don't know of any other companies that compare their foundation shades to other foundation shades and they have hundreds of different foundations that you can choose from i feel like this foundation is also innovative in its actual components and i will show it to you because it's really cool um mine's really dirty because i've been using it for the past week but it's really neat so on top you have the pump which is pretty much a standard pump and i guess i should say i think you get like a full fluid ounce in this yeah you get a full fluid ounce in this which is standard but then inside and this is where you guys are going to see that it's too dark for me there's a doe foot 
how cool is that so like if you're using this as a concealer you have a doe foot that you can use if you're using it as a foundation you have the pump that you can use it is far too dark for me to use as an under eye concealer as a, like for a brightening effect and i don't have issues with acne so i've not been able to use it as a, a spot concealer so i have nothing to say about whether or not it's a good concealer as a foundation i didn't notice any creasing or fading um or migrating breaking apart and I only got a very, very, very teeny, tiny bit of it sinking into my fine lines. I do have more mature skin, so I do have more fine lines. Um, not necessarily wrinkles, just I have like fine lines here, I have smirk lines, and then I do have some lines on my forehead and a little bit on my under eyes, but nothing that's like, nothing like crevices or anything. My biggest, my biggest issue is my pores and I didn't really see it sinking or emphasizing my pores that badly either. So I feel like this would work as a good concealer if I had it in a good concealing shade. When using this product, I did use um, the ColourPop No Filter Foundation in the shade 02, which helped lighten those areas and brighten them quite a bit because <laughs> 02 is almost white and this is, this is not. So it was, <laughs> it was quite the contrast. I'm gonna go to Ulta's website so that I can give you guys a little bit of information about this actual product uh, at Ulta. It does retail for $36. Like I said, they have 100 different shades and it looks like Ulta carries 40, which is still pretty good. That's still a, a decent shade range, okay? And they don't just sell like 40 light, light, medium. No, they, they go fairly deep. These are some of the deeper shades sorry about my ring light but those are some of the deeper shades that Ulta carries this is what Ulta has to say about this product it is a multi-purpose complexion miracle that serves as both a foundation and concealer with a unique dual dual applicator component for quick and easy application it conceals blemishes dark spots and imperfections while achieving flawless all-over coverage it's packed with skin loving ingredients and is a long wear formula that helps protect the skin against environmental stressor, stressors like pollution and high energy visible blue light for a healthier looking complexion. It is cruelty free, vegan friendly, and gluten free. Um, and then it, it has like ginseng, green tea, vitamin B, lingonberry, polysaccharide, that's how you say it? film, uh, serotonin complex. It just has a lot of really good ingredients. So I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to let you guys watch my original footage of trying the foundation on, how I applied it, what my first initial reaction was, and how it kind of like stood up to my test of wearing it. I think I wore it like 12 hours that day, you guys. So, and I went through a lot. Like that day was, was kind of stressful and there was a lot going on. So go watch that and then I will be back to give you guys my tips and tricks that I've discovered since wearing this for the first time and so enjoy let me look up how to apply this because i know for some foundations application ah, can really make a difference and apply one to two pumps directly onto face using your finger blend using beholder cruelty free dual application action applicator all right so that's what that looks like i do not have that but i do have this it looks similar um, it's by BH Cosmetics. It's number three. I know that it's from the something royalty line. I don't know. I don't even think they sell it anymore. Love this brush for a foundation brush. For my primer, I use the Pacifica Crystal Primer, which this has been a summer favorite for me. So what I'm going to do, shake this up, and I'm going to just put it on my face instead of putting it on my finger because I'm trying so hard not to touch my face if I don't really have to. Let's start with that and see if I need more. It's blending really nice. Oh, I love this already. Depending on how it goes on my nose kind of tells me a lot about a foundation. And what? Aha! You can barely see my pores. I, I don't want to say too much about this too soon. So I'm just going to put the rest of this on my face and we'll go from there.
The shade match isn't super duper bad. It is, it is darker than my neck, but I feel like I can fix that, you know, with like some concealer. I, look at my forehead. That does not look like the forehead of a 37 year old. Also, my hair stuck in it, so love that. Can I get it out? No, I think it's just become one with the foundation. I don't feel like I need to do a second coat. Also, I'm afraid if I do a second coat, it's gonna make this too dark. So since I can't use this as an under eye concealer, I am gonna use my trusted and true concealer that I love, which is the ColourPop Concealer in Fair 02. I think it's the lightest shade next to white. That's a lot lighter than my foundation. That blended out so nicely, so smoothly, and so easily. And I'm not upset about the shade simply because I feel like the concealer helped brighten my face a lot. Let me turn down my light so you guys can see. What? Wow, it is so nice. I really like this. I really like it. I, I hope this wears well because this might be a new favorite of mine. So I'm going to set my under eyes. I'm using the Airspun original formula loose face powder I'm gonna set the rest of my face with this press powder it is NYX no filter finishing powder in the shade porcelain I use this because I feel again like it really helps set my makeup with having an oily skin and it's been helping keep it during our 100 degree days. Typically, foundations rub right off my nose because it's so oily and that, that stain. And there's not even a setting spray. I am going to go apply the rest of my makeup to see how this all applies and whether or not, you know, it blends out okay. But I'm really happy, fingers crossed, that this works out. All right, you guys, my makeup is done. I just went with a really simple basic face. Uh, I did set my face. I used the Pacifica Crystal Dew Setting Spray. I feel like I'm talking a lot about Pacifica in this video, but you guys, they have a lot of underrated products that I absolutely love. Let me turn this down again. I feel like it looks really, really good on my skin, you guys. I, I am in love. All of my other products applied like a dream. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go live the rest of my day and I'm gonna check in with you guys and give you guys my opinion, show you guys what my face is doing. I don't really have a ton planned to do today. So I'm not like going to the gym and putting my face to the absolute test. However, I'm going to be editing, so I'm going to be resting. I have a bad habit of resting my face on my hands, so I'm going to be touching my face quite a bit. Uh, I also have to film, so I'm going to be in front of bright lights. Uh, and then I will leave my house. For you guys, I will leave my house. And you know it's been days since I've left. I will see you guys after a bit with my first check-in. His head is like perfect size. Hey! <laughs> you look so mad. It's because he doesn't have this foundation on his face. Honestly, that face is so creepy. Anyway, I'm hanging out with my friend here. <laughs> um, this is what my foundation looks like in, ow, you just stepped on my foot. Oh. In store lighting, um, I do, I'm on my phone, so it is gonna be a little bit of a softer focus, but I still feel like it looks really good. Still not settling in any of my fine lines. There's my smirk line. I've been smirking, but I think it looks good. I like it. I like it quite a bit. But we are gonna leave here now and go to Meyer. Did I ever say what time it was? What time is it? Five. It's 5 p.m. by the way. It's really freaking hot in here. It's hot, it's humid. I'm um, sweating really bad, which is gross. Um, or attractive, maybe you're into that thing. I'm not, but. Yeah, my nose is also running. I think I might be sick, but somehow, like, even though I wipe my nose, like I always do, because it's what I do, 
it's not the I, I don't feel like the foundation is transferring onto the paper towel that I'm using to wipe my nose um, all right a guy is looking at me oddly so we're gonna go it's over there it's on that side it is check-in time it's only been an hour since I last did a check-in but a lot has gone on during that hour. I said I wasn't putting myself through like a major test today because I didn't really have a lot I was doing. However, um, I just got done crying, trying on clothes, sweating, uh, shopping, more crying. This is, this is still really looking good on my skin. Um, it's breaking up a little bit around my nose right there. Also, I've like wiped off a whole bunch because uh, my nose is running today. So yeah, lots of tears, lots of crying. I tried on three different outfits, so that's a lot of clothes going all over the place. None of the foundation transferred. It didn't rub off. It's still going strong. And even when I'm sweating, because I don't know what the temperature is, but it feels like it's 200 degrees. So it's, what'd you say, 88 feels like? 94. 94 degrees. What's the humidity? 100? I, I'm gonna yeah, guess it's 100. Questions. 54. Humidity's only 54%. I call it BS. I'm gonna try to check in a couple more times before I take this off my face. But seriously, it is looking super duper good. You can kind of see a little bit of my skin texture, but that is nothing compared to what it would normally look like. And I don't feel like it looks cakey. And it's not, even though I'm sweating, even though I have oily skin, I don't feel like I'm starting to get like that glossy, that's highlight, but I'm not getting like that glossy, oily grossness that my skin likes to do. All right, I will see you guys in my next check-in. All right, it is time for another check-in. It has been about four hours, I think, since I last checked in. And during that time, I have edited um, and played with my cockatiels. Is that all I've done for four hours? I mean, I was playing intensely with my cockatiels, okay? And I feel like the foundation is still holding up really well. It is starting to look a little bit oily around my nose, and you can start to see my pores. And it is still a little bit broken up right there. Um, it has kind of started to break up. Not really break up, it's just kind of looking, I guess, more textured right there. But nothing, nothing bad. I mean, you have to be on my face to even see it. It is starting to look a little bit uh, makeup-y around my nose, but I mean, my nose is literally like an oil slick. And there is a very small, it's, the foundation is still there. So I don't know what smudged off. I don't know if it's the powder, the highlight, or what. But there is a teeny tiny, like, fingerprint print smudge right there. But everything else, I'm, I'm still loving it. Still really enjoying it. Um, this has been on my face now for well over 10 hours. And I still have stuff to do. So uh, this is not my final check-in. I think I'm probably going to check in one more time. But this is, this is, it's looking good. I'm gonna take it off in like two hours. So I will see you guys probably in like two hours. It is time to wrap up this video and give you guys my final thoughts on this foundation. It is well after midnight. Um, I think it's been on my face for like 13, maybe 14 hours. I honestly don't remember because I forget what time that I finished my face but I really, really, really like it. I actually, I love it. Um, it still looks, let me turn this down. It still looks fantastic. I just, you can see a little bit of oil. Again, already talked about that. Um, it's not really broken up, broken up to the point that you'd be able to see it unless you were that close to my face, which if you were that close to my face, you deserve to see pores and fine lines. Uh, it did set in this line or these two lines slightly it still looks really good under my eyes my foreheads i feel like still looks really good i don't feel like any texture really started popping out i don't feel like i look overall shiny i do look a little bit shinier in some areas but for the most part um yeah i think it looks i think it looks really good so these are my tips and tricks and my recommendations on how this product might work best for you, especially if you do have a little bit more mature skin or if you do struggle with having oily skin or if you live in a place like I do where it's like 100% humidity and 100 degrees. 
I did put this to the test. I tried it with primers, without primers, with powders, with setting it with powder, without setting it with powder. And personally, I found out that I was okay with not using a primer with this foundation. However, if I use a pore filling primer, a mattifying primer, which are typically silicone based primer, or a silicone primer that was just a silicone primer, anything that had dimethicone in it seemed to not make it last as long. It stuck weird in places, almost like it looked like I had dry patches, but I do not have dry skin at all. And it did not, it did not last. It, the longevity went out the window and it broke up a lot, especially on my nose, around my mouth, around my forehead. It just broke up, it separated. And there were places where it just like flat out came off and I had like bare patches on my face. That is not untypical with most foundations if I use a dimethicone base primer in the summertime. Now in the wintertime, dimethicone works totally fine for me, no issues. But my, my skin is a little bit more combo rather than oily. Um, summertime, if you have oily skin, I recommend doing no primer or using a water base, base primer. And then I did also set it with powder. There was one day that I set it with powder, there was one day that I did not set it with powder with having oily skin. Again, I did feel like it was just a couple of hours and um, my oils were coming through the foundation and it wasn't looking as flawless. It was looking pretty shiny. It was starting to crease. It was starting to not necessarily break up, just look like it was on the edge of breaking up. So when I did set it with the powder, which I set it with the Pacifica Cherry, um, cherry Velvet Powder, I set it with... I tried the Cody Airspun powder. I tried, what was the other one I tried? Oh, I, I tried a press powder by NYX and all three of those powders worked flawlessly. I didn't have an issue with any of them. I don't feel like one worked better than the other, but setting them with powders definitely kept it from creasing, kept it from breaking up, and it made the oils kind of stay at bay for a lot longer. Now, by the end of the day, regardless, because of how oily my skin is, I did have more of a dewy finish, but it didn't look like greasy or oily. It looked more like dewy and fresh. Um, and then I did use a setting spray. That was the way that I found that I really, really liked it just cause like I love setting spray. I feel like I'm shellacking my makeup in place. And when I didn't use a setting spray, I subconsciously didn't feel like I was able to have the durability. So I like took extra caution not to touch my face. I did notice it did want to rub away like right here because when I'm editing I sit like this a lot. And so I did notice that it was wanting to rub away and it does always rub away a little bit on my nose if I don't use a setting spray. So again, if you have oily skin, I did use a setting spray. Um, I tried it with the Urban Decay All Nighter. I also tried it with what else did I? The Makeup Revolution Sports uh, FX. I think it was FX setting spray. And then I also used it with the, again, Pacifica Crystal um, setting spray. So, and all three of those worked flawlessly. I don't really feel like one worked better or, wor or worse than the others. So, my final recommendations if you have oily skin, if you have mature skin, definitely. Pay attention to what primer you're using. Make sure that it's water-based so that it doesn't break apart. It lasts longer. Use a setting spray. Set it with your favorite powder. Um, yeah, and I think you're going to be totally fine. I think you're really going to enjoy this foundation. And I feel like overall, this product met most of my needs, if not all. I would say this is a solid 8.5 to a 9 out of 10 that I would recommend it. And try it out. Let me know what you guys think about it. If you had a good experience if you had a negative experience. I'm kind of intrigued, especially if you have dry skin. Um, how does it work for you? Because it works so well for me with having oily skin, my brain wants to say there's no way that this can work for somebody who has dry skin. However, they're so inclusive with their shade range, I feel like they're also going to be super inclusive with their like skin type. So I don't know. I don't know. But this is, this is, in my opinion, a very innovative, very groundbreaking product. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys do too. So yeah, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy this product if you have it. And I'm gonna be looking for you guys in the comments below. So have a great day and I will see you guys in my next video. So bye.